one group out of over 100 students got 32 of these into a 400 milliliter beaker. So I've got 32 here. I'm going to see if I can get more than that. So there's 10 here and 10 here. And hopefully this gets you thinking right away that they take up different amount of space in, in one dimension and the other dimension. But we're gonna see that how you arrange these particles also matter when you're doing in 3D. All right, now I also have 32 of these white particles. And I gave you different size particles. Uh, so you had to think about, you had to put more thought into um, how you had to arrange these rather than um, randomly pouring in uh, one size particles. So I did this before I taught anything about crystal lattice structures just to get you in the mode of thinking uh, about the packing efficiency of particles in metals or ionic compounds. So what I'm going to do is put the uh, larger particles in first and it looks like I can fit in seven with some gaps. Now I have to do a one-to-one -one ratio so the key is I have to do seven of the white smaller particles now um, because if I don't do that at some point um, the, the efficiency will drop because you're going to get large on large and small on small and you're going to end up with more uh, more empty space. All right, here I've got my second layer of the white particles into the dimples of the larger black particles. Here it is from the side. So here is the roller test. It's hard to do this with one hand. Um, but I got 32 in here. It doesn't look like I can get any more. So now let's take a look at one way to um, uh, measure the packing fraction is the volume of the particles over the volume of the sp space. Now this would normally be a cube, but it's a beaker, so we'll have to figure that out a different way. So there's formulas for this. Um, but before teaching you any of these concepts, I just had you try to figure out how you could get um, get something like that, some kind, some information similar to how efficient was your packing method. So I'm going to get the volume of my spheres using water displacement. So here we have a fairly large graduated cylinder. Fill this up with water. Uh, I changed my method. I just got a smaller one. I was going to put all the particles into that one large graduated cylinder, but I think that would give us better results. But I'm just going to go with. Uh, a fewer particles because I don't I don't have a lot of time. All right, so if we look at this, get the beginning volume of water is fifty seven, about fifty fifty six point something. But we don't need estimated digits here. Just kind of going in a, for a range. Uh, we're looking for a range, so this is about fifty seven, and I'm going to put uh, one of one of each in there now. Now I need to get something to push these, uh, uh, submerge these particles. Okay, back with the pencil. All right, looks like, boy, hard to do this with one hand. Looks like uh, 65, a little more than 65. Let me just put two more in here. All right, 
less margin of error. All right, now we got 73. Go with 73. All right, I can't write and record at the same time. So up here I've got the final volume of the uh, water displaced is 73. Uh, initial volume of the water level, sorry, water level I meant is 57. Uh, so the displacement of that water, 16 milliliters by four particles. And I multiplied by 16 because I had a total of 64 particles in my beaker at 32 blacks, 32 whites, 64. All right, so I uh, got 96 is, uh, um, oh, sorry, that's, that was just my work. So the total volume of the particles is uh, 256. Now I'm, I'm going to get the, I need to get the uh, volume of water that can fit into this beaker. All right, I removed all those particles. I'm filling this up with water. All right, and I'm gonna use this big graduated cylinder to um, see how much water, what the volume of this beaker really is. Cause, all right, so there's 250. And then still got some more left. All right. So 170. Okay, so 250 plus 170 is that 420. Let's see if I can do this. Hold on. All right, so there's my uh, there's my total volume of the beaker. So one way you can get the packing fraction is. All right, so I put the volume of the particles over the volume of the um, beaker, and I got a packing fraction of 0.61 or 61 percent. 